episode of the design comedy is about to begin. A unique step towards the design industry leaders at the helm. And today it will be no less. We have the honor to host a real sea wolf today, a long-standing figure in the furniture sector who, with his concrete and forward-looking vision, is leading Poltrona Frau to new and unexplored lands. Before we introduce him and take him in, let's watch a short film. The greatest stories are stories about love, and Poltrona Frau's story is one of these. Over 100 years of emotions which have seduced millions of people. The spark was struck in Turin. Renzo Frau, a resourceful upholsterer, realized that a new taste was emerging deep within buildings and homes. That is how Poltrona Frau came to life. Its original armchairs in prized leather immediately captivated the public, charmed by the fitting interplay between modernity, brand and communication. Poltrona Frau creates voluptuous icons, imitated by many, desired by all. The upper classes and Italian nobility choose them as a mark of prestige. Renzo dies soon after, and it is his wife who carries his dream forth. His vision remains and inspires Savina in the creation of ageless masterpieces, leading Poltrona Frau above and beyond. With the war, everything grinds to a halt. The economic boom brings a running start, and this time, unstoppable momentum. The company is purchased and moved to the Marche region, enhancing the values of its origins. It is the period of Franco Moschini's leadership, new collaborations and timeless success. The world pursues change, and Poltrona Frau opens itself up to a revolution, embracing a modern design yet imbued with its own history. The renewal culminates with the birth of the interiors in motion and contract divisions. Now Poltrona Frau style also dresses offices and meeting places, and the world of travel. A fateful encounter leads into the new millennium, and the company becomes a group, acquiring industry-leading brands. Fresh from the victory of the Design Wallpaper Award, the brand celebrates its centenary, and it does so with great style. Michele De Lucchi designs the Poltrona Fra Museum, where history looks to the future. Two years later, the first showroom in China opens, a prelude for milestones in Asia and in the world, such as the El Decor International Design Award. Today, Poltrona Frau flies high, made strong by its long-lasting values and part of a new international family. Its products confer prestige to the most sophisticated interiors in the world, to naval craft and even to aeroplanes. A story of love, quality and beauty, born from a brilliant mind. It still thrives in the hearts of those who it has charmed through the years. Here at the design comedy, Nicola Coropolis, CEO of Poltrona Frau. Hello, Paolo. Good morning. Everything okay? Thank you, and thank you for your invitation. I see you brought your chair from home. I wanted to make sure I was comfortable. <laughs> there. A real design experience. The resto. Yes, this city here is called an interview and was designed by Massimo and Lella Vignelli for use in interviews with Rai. Really? In 1988. And here, a little anecdote straight from Tolentino. Do you come from Tolentino or the land of your home and residence? I come from Tolentino in the car, four hours and 20 minutes. Comfortable. 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 So look, let's start a little from the beginning. So, Tolentino and uh, Poltrona Frau Museum. And I'd like to unveil a few, a few numbers to better understand what the heritage is, but above all the origins of the company. Nearly 100, 110,000 square meters area. An area of 100,000 meters. Where we work uh, almost uh, 340,000 square meters of leather. I said uh, Tolentino early, but I like to make a little bit of uh, a historic node. It all began in Turin. Turin, a city in the industrial triangle, where Renzo Frau founded his artisanal laboratory in 1912. 
which then grew to become a business in 1962. Then 50 years after its foundation was transferred to Tolentino. Transfer because the company is acquired by the Nazareno Gabrielli, a historical company of the Italian leather shop in Tolentino, and led by Franco Moschini, with the aim, at that very far-sighted moment, of applying the leather processing techniques that had developed in the Chienti Valley since the Middle Ages, and which were applied to the leather and footwear world, including in the field of furniture. And I'd say that was a bet won. One, first point, and so, staying a little bit in the DNA of Poltrona Frau, and so the leather processing. From here, in 2020, begins a project that's pretty much from its origins, from that, uh, mm, from that color heart. Poltrona Frau has become famous for being the first company to systematically bring color into the leather. And this happened in the mid-1980s, when a chromatologist, Paolo Minoli, was commissioned to analyze what was then called the color system of Poltrona Frau, which for almost 40 years was the foundation of a whole series of activities and productions of Poltrona Frau. And then it has also become a benchmark for industry. From color system, then, we go to color sphere. Yes, it's a changed concept. And it is something related to the fact that color also has its own history. Color lives in time and with time. So it changes its nature and perception. I have to say that in a liquid world, like the one in which we live in the 19th century, very scientific systemization, which had been brought by Paolo Minoli, it was unadaptable to the desire to unite, mix, combine colors, finishes, and materials. And so the basic idea of color sphere is to create spheres, black worlds, that can easily mix with each other and in turn combine in a very liquid way with the tissues that we've introduced over the years, with the leathers, that have been standing alongside the Poltrona Frau color system over more than 30 years, with new materials like marble and leather that have come in overwhelmingly in our collections over the last few years. So there is a change in the color selection policy from color system to color sphere. I'd like to say that we've gone from color science to color consciousness. Color lives in a way that's much more diverse, much more multiform, and much more adaptable, like everything that's going on in our day. And in this uh, color remapping for the Poltrona Frau leather, were you also inspired by the free division that you mentioned earlier, namely the residential, a contract, and in tears in motion? In tears in motion, absolutely, yes. We started from the consideration of color at 360 degrees. From the use of leather, not only in the home-oriented furniture, but also in the world of work, in the world of hospitality, in the world of theatres, which are at the heart 
of our division contract, but also in the world of travel. And we were helped by an expert in this field anyway. We referred to the consultancy of Giulio Ridolfo, who is a very famous character, especially for working with major companies in the process of creating and mapping the chromatic universes of these same companies. The result is uh, seven color families. The result is seven families, 14 groups for a total of 73 colors. We also got a reduction in the original color number of the color system because we went from the 96 colors we had in our collection to the 73 that we now have. This, however, maintains the 26 colors that represent 80% of our sales. Well, the continuum. As in fashion, there is the continuum. You have your palette. The hardcore. The one that we can then build the rest of the world, the color of Poltrona Frau. I think we have a little video to see from uh, Color Sphere. Let's see it. We can see from the video that there is a little bit of expertise from the company and also heritage in color research. Is the application of Colosphere also reflected in the processes? Has it technically affect them? Let's say that the current color system that will leave the place of Colosphere is already something different from the color system of 1986. Tanning techniques have evolved, technology has made it possible 
to apply all kinds of color in the leather. And then, of course, the tanning has become much more sustainable with respect to the past. And the result, however, is a unique color experience with color sphere. I'm going to hook up with this concept of uniqueness. I would therefore like uh, to take this opportunity to introduce another subject. Unique. For me, a symbol from the chair. Before we talk about uh, intervista chair, but now I'm not referring to the chair we are sitting on. I quote Vanity Fair. This product celebrates 90 years this year. Well, 90 years have passed since the design of Renzo Frau's workshop, which had already died in 1926, and that came out with the Model 904, a model that reflects the spirit of the time. You should only just think of Mickey Mouse's chair, which had similar forms to the 904 model. The 904 model became Vanity Fair in 1984, when, in a return operation of the Poltrona Frau historical catalogue, it was decided to take the original model and make it much more sexualized and feminine. I love to say that in accordance with the spirit of the 1980s, the product was cotton. She was also associated with the red color of the chair, which was part of the poltrona Frau tradition. But at that time, it was not in the codes of communication in the furnishing world. So we have an icon that has actually been transformed over time. To celebrate the 90th anniversary of the Vanity Fair, we decided with the commendable contribution of Roberto Lazzaroni to return to the original model and to try to adapt it to the current anthropometry and ergonomics. Let's not forget that the 904 Vanity Fair in 1930 was designed for an Italian affluent customer. And today, the Vanity Fair is aimed at an Italian, Asian and American customer. A customer who certainly has a more global flavor, but has also changed in his physiognomy. So we tried to restore the original aesthetic codes without actually changing anything from the original model, but making it more comfortable and certainly more suited to the present day. The first model, uh, who designed it? The first model was a design by Renzo Frau's workshop and therefore an unsigned model that we attributed to Renzo Frau's archive. All right, since I see you are so prepared and you've shown us uh, a little bit uh, at 360 degrees, from the beginning of what is uh, 90 years of Vanity Fair, now is the time for the game. As we other guests who have been seated in that chair, there is always a play moment at the design comedy. I want to test one more time your knowledge of Vanity Fair. So take this beautiful box. Oh. Now, there is a bunch of icons of design world in there, including the Vanity Fair. Let's see if your sensitivity and touch allow you to get it out in the first place. Unmistakable. 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 There she is in all her splendor. So what's changed compared to this one? What action will Lazzaroni take? 
Beh, l'intervento lo ha già fatto. Uh, well, the surgery, he had done it before. He made it larger, 12 centimeters larger. He spilled his armrests. He tilted the back more so that he had a better comfort position, especially when you look at something or convert it. It's a whole series of details, of spikes and finishes. In any case, the materials remain the same. The product remains entirely made from natural materials. From jute straps, lines, steel biconal springs, and actually completely sustainable. All right, I'm going to move this one over and put it right next to me, keeping me company. But uh, I'm always uh, on the issue of re-edition, if I'm not mistaken. To continue our games, we have another protagonist of this year, which is the Kyoto. Uh, I'm very glad that you have this guy from the Jinx. This wonderful table, designed by Gianfranco Frattini for Bottega Ghianda in 1974. While the Vanity Fair XC is a remail of a product that is part of our tradition, so we've brought back to the old splendor. This is a real re-edition of an iconic model of design, whose rights were to another company, but which, thanks to the cooperation, we've been working with the Frattini heirs for a few years, led us first to the re-edition of the tree. Then last year with the re-edition of the Turner and this year to relaunch this masterpiece of Italian design. It's marvelous. It's almost an anti-stress reassemble. Absolutely. The nibbles are the index of the work of wise-minded economists of whom Pierluigi Ghianda was a representative and who we have tried to reproduce in a respectful and philological manner. Does it have a little Japanese inspiration? It was born precisely after a trip which Frattini and Ghianda made in Japan. In Japan, so of course the name Kyoto. Of course Kyoto. Beh, um... Well, relaunching the theme of the trip, I will say that times, fashions, and at this point, latitudes, are also a bit of the plot in which the word poltrona frau can be found in the world. So it's a global coverage. Well, let's say that the company is an intimately Italian company but also, of course, a global company. Over the last 12 years, the company has grown so much and it has moved its core business from the Italian market, which only 12 years ago accounted for more than 70% of total turnover, to the rest of the world. And today, the proportion has turned upside down. 75% of our turnover is achieved outside Italy. However, it maintains a strong positioning and distributive trickiness in the domestic market. Today, our first export market is China. I think the net of events that are not predictable, China will become our first market in a short time. But over the course of these years, we've grown generally in all Asian countries, but also in the American continent, particularly in North America, 
where we're fortunate to be part of an American group, to be able to read the market from the perspective of an American. So, to read what happens not from the perspective of the export company in the United States, but rather from a much more organic logic. What kind of numbers do we count on at the retail level? We certainly started a process of retraining in our distribution. We have a little less than 500 stores in the world. In recent years, we've been focusing on the creation of single brand outlets, which we run directly or run by partners. And if this was not possible, or not possible, we have been aiming at the creation of branded space within large areas. I have to say today that out of the 500 stores that we have in the world, 60% still have strong brand characterization. We have about 100 single brand outlets around the world and of these 16 are managed by us directly. You are very modest because you say almost 100, but I counted 140. Yes, well, I, I didn't really include the outlets that have uh, smaller areas. Ah, okay. I didn't include the branded spaces. For those who are watching us, especially from Japan, they are happy to know that recently in Osaka you open a new flagship or monobrand. It is an open monobrand in the Yodo Yabashi neighborhood in Osaka, which follows the flagship which was opened in Oyama in Tokyo in 2018. So two years later, the success of the Poltrona Frau experience in Oyama has led our partner to invest in opening this store in Osaka. But the interesting thing, and also the reason why it was opened up in Osaka, is because it felt that Poltrona Frau was a luxury brand that could go beyond the mere size of the furniture. A brand that trends, a brand that expresses a lifestyle. And that is why it represents values that are wider than the world of furniture. Before quoting the 2020 novelties, I said Kyoto and the Vanity Fair celebration. Do we have anything else to crumble on the novelties table uh, this year? We certainly have a number of very interesting projects. First of all, working with a new study, which is the Hong Kong AB concept that made the dining chair viola. Calling it a chair would be reductive, which is in fact a little piece of balance of the shapes and materials that wood, leather or fabric come into. We have the Times Lounge chair of Spalvieri and Del Ciotto that stems from the idea of the Times, currently the most successful bed of Poltrona Frau, designed in 2018 by Spalvieri and Del Ciotto, these two young local designers from Tolentino. And we also have the sled version of the Marta di Roberto Lazzeroni. This last year, and it has been very, very successful. Well, let's say that you didn't save yourself for 2020. No, we would have presented other projects as well, 
but we chose to launch the projects that we talked about and those are the most mature projects in the prototypical phase. When the pandemic broke out, and that's why we are already able to show all the new developments in 2020 in our Manzoni store, in our store, and I'm very pleased to say that in the Shanghai store too. Ah. Yes, because we have created three sets of new products. When we learned that the mobile hall was being postponed until June, we changed the approach and we set up three sets. One for Milan, one for Shanghai and one for New York of all the new developments. Well, I'd say we didn't save ourselves then. No, we chose to continue the projects that were in the pipeline before the outbreak of the pandemic in a very interesting theme, which is future heritage, which clearly summarizes with this elegant oxymoron the ability of Portona Frau to draw inspiration from its roots, to present them in the present, to project them into the future. Wonderful. Thanks to your speech, we've been able to enter into the intimate and also into the history of Portona Frau. We started out from the team of color system, which today has changed, evolved, and become color sphere. And we've touched Vanity's re-edition a little bit, rather than the Kyoto table, to this collection, the Future Heritage Project, which obviously retains all that incredible beauty of a timeless classic produced by Poltrona Frau. So all I can do is thank you, and I hope you had a good time. I had great fun, and I should be the one to thank you and your great participation in the design comedy. Perfect. Thank you very much, Nicola. Thanks very much. Thanks.